Cy Fisher, who was my agent, called me and said there was a spot available on the Jackie Gleason show. And was I interested? And I said, yes. And he said, let me speak to Jackie. Now, I had known Jackie. Uh, we had been friends. Milton Berle had introduced me to him. He had substituted for Milton Berle at the Carnival Nightclub when Milton was ill. And uh, he was remarkably effective. And Jackie and I had spent time together in Las Vegas. Um, so I thought that uh, he'd be receptive to my coming on the show. And Cy called back and said, uh, what, what will you need? He wants to know how much will you need for the four weeks. I said, what are they willing to pay? And Cy so said, you first. So I said, well, if it's only four weeks, I have to um, keep uh, my residence here and I'll have to live in a hotel in New York. And what do you think? And we finally said, okay, we'll ask for $1,000 a week. Uh -huh. At that time, that may have been high, but the two uh, dwellings uh, necessitated it. Uh, about three days later, Cy called and said, you got the money, but Jackie wants to speak to you. I said, okay. And he got on the phone and says, hello, Leonard. I'm paying you $1,000 a week, but don't expect us to be friends anymore. I hung up. So. As I'm flying to New York in those days, I think it took... 10 hours. If you got under 10 hours, that was a, a memorable trip. So I, um, I had seen the Gleason show. It had been on Dumont uh, and had just started on CBS. And I always felt the honeymooners were more than sketch material. And so on the plane, I outlined a full hour honeymooner, which I called Letter to the Boss. And I was determined to tell it to Jackie before I started. Um, when I arrived in New York, I went to the Park Sheridan Hotel where he had his offices, and I went upstairs and met Jack Philbin, who was the producer, and a very pleasant, affable man and fun. And he said, well, why don't I take you down and meet the other writers? You can get to work. I said, no, I want to speak to Jackie. He said, well, you, can, you can't uh, now. Jackie's indisposed. I said, no, I, then I'll go. I'll wait until Jackie's available, and I haven't been in New York in years. He said, no, no, you go down right now. I, I became insistent. So Jack figured, okay, let him get his come up. And it's, he said, Jackie's at the doctor's hospital. And he told me where it was, and I left. I, at that time, Jackie would go to doctor's hospital whenever he was recovering from uh, maybe drinking too much or eating too much, and it was his way of uh, isolating himself. So, um, and Doctor's Hospital uh, didn't have a very good reputation uh, because I think it catered essentially to people uh, such as Jackie. Well, I got off at the fourth floor and was headed in the direction of Jackie's uh, 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 room, and a nurse stopped me and said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to see Mr. Gleason. She said, he went home. He wasn't feeling well. When I got to see him, I couldn't get to him at home. I went and met the writers first and settled in. But I did, and I, I argued effectively because eventually we did it. It was the first of the, wasn't the full hour. He still came out with the, and had their monologue and the dancing girls. But then the next 40 or 45 minutes were the honeymoon sketch. And it worked so well that eventually we did more honeymooners than anything else and in our second and third years uh, the variety show was uh, mostly honeymooners with an occasional Reggie Van Gleeson, Poor Soul, uh, Fred McBabbitt, Joe the Bartender and then of course uh, the classic 39 are all um, on film and our honeymooners, uh, they've, they've endured and held up. I always thought to myself, if we'd known they were going to be classics, we would have written them better. Um, but uh, those were remarkably uh, rewarding years. Uh, uh, Gleason was uh, inordinately gifted. Um, uh, you, he had total recall to it. Very odd. It took us all week to write a show. Uh, we did 50 uh, weeks in the beginning. And 
uh, we would start Sunday, uh, Monday mornings and finish sometime uh, Friday night or, uh, or early Saturday morning, meaning Gleason never saw the script earlier than the night before the show or the morning of the show. Uh, Aud Audrey and Art, for their own salvation, would come in each night and take whatever pages we had finished. Uh, I don't think you can have a finer endorsement of a writing staff than that, that everybody did what we wrote. Uh, rumors started that Gleason insisted the scripts we slipped under his door, that he didn't have any, want to have anything to do with the writers. It was true, we did slip under the door, because as I said, he was asleep by then uh, when we finished. But he had total recall, photographic memory, and... Uh, uh, he went on and did the script, uh, and he only rehearsed once. He wanted to keep the spontaneity. The other people rehearsed as often as possible. If he didn't know a line, if he missed a line, they never stepped out of character. Audrey became the third base coach of the show. Uh, if Jackie didn't know the line, he couldn't get it, he would pace, and she would shift her body, and she might put her hand on the hip, and the elbow would be facing the icebox. And he'd know, oops, and go to the icebox and then get back into uh, the litany.